Our face is too big. Oh, oh, hi. Uh, welcome, welcome uh, everybody. <laughs> we are back <laughs> in round two of uh, today's regional at Malmo. Uh, I myself am Costa Daidimos, and I am joined by my colleague over here, Romy Clayson. And um, today, of course, I'm a new face. Hello, everybody. I am uh, here in, char in place of Marcus Stadzer. Unfortunately, couldn't make it. But um, uh, basically, I'm here instead for now. And um, accomplishments, just a couple. I've made day one worlds now only for this year I've played a couple of years so I do have a bit of back knowledge with the game um, uh, but we're just gonna explore the game with whatever <laughs> knowledge we can and uh, Romy's gonna be here helping me out yeah definitely so I definitely want to thank you for filling in super last minute we're very very happy that we could find someone of course so the players we are going to be featuring is Miguel Marti yep. and Brendan so Mikhail has uh, actually been playing for a very long time. He's yep. actually been playing since 2012. Mm -hmm. So definitely one of the earlier formats and still now around eight years later playing 2020 now in this Malmo regional. Uh, one of his accomplishments is also a top four mm -hmm. worlds in 2014. So definitely, you know, an accomplished player here. Oh yes, definitely. And even um, even more recent as well, he did end up winning the um, first uh, international um, uh, actually happening in London back in 2017 as well. So so very good. He's been, just like you said, playing for many years, to be honest. And he's been just showing that consistency that you do usually see from veteran type players such as himself. Um, yeah, Brennan also has uh, some accomplishments. He's actually was the Bochum regional champion of 2015. So also someone has been playing for quite a while, you know. Now, five years later, he's now here in Malmo still playing and hopefully still enjoying the game. Definitely. Yeah, so I mean, we got basically two world class uh, competitors face to face today. They're both 1-0, and oh, so really, really solid. Um, I do expect a very rigorous match from the both of them, a really good display as well. So um, it, it's not much. We're just going to probably uh, check to see um, what we can actually see from them yeah, today. So now here, going to be seeing the teams here. So Ooh. on Mikel's side, we have the Togekiss. Venusaur and Incineroar, so both two Pokemon has actually been adding now in Season 3. Yeah. Uh, weren't really allowed before, together with Excadrill, Conkeldur and that Milotic. Yeah, so definitely interesting choices here, just like he did say. Um, series 3 does bring the resurrection of certain starter mm -hmm. Pokemon as well, such as Incineroar and Venusaur. Um, Incineroar being very predominant within the past few years of the format, um, it does have all around amazing stats, very bulky, very defensive, but can actually be offensive at the same time, whilst holding that intimidate ability too. So, um, actually, it did get parting shot this generation as well, uh, coming on to Sun and, uh, Sword and Shield, sorry. So, it's a really good, fine addition that pretty much just makes it even more viable. Of course, it, ca it can technically be seen that it has been slightly um, uh, nerfed in a way as if where um, it's not as good with its fake out pressure because Dynamax does ignore the flinches, but it still is proving itself quite worthy to st hold its two feet in this current format so far. Yeah, we actually also saw an Incineroar in round one, so we're definitely seeing the re <laughs> resurrection of it again. Exactly. We saw it so much in 2019, where it really utilized U-turn very well, but now this time it got parting shot, so it can really lower the uh, damage output coming from opponents while actually switching out and kind of resetting its board position. Oh, definitely, especially when you have Pokemon like uh, Milotic as well to kind of go against any opposing Intimidates or stat reducing boost with its competitive ability being able to boost its special attack by two stages. But we actually see Brandon's team come up on screen as well. We do see the Jellicent, Togekiss, Rhyperia, Abomasnow, Durant and Salazzle. So Yeah, so definitely here an interesting team with that uh, Durant, which we actually also saw in round one. Definitely in its Dynamax form with that Hustle ability can do a lot of damage. So Salazzle not something that we've really seen a lot in this format. So I'm definitely interested in kind of what kind of team um, he runs it with to kind of see what exactly that Salazzle is going to be doing. Yes, exactly. So I do think that Salazzle is actually there to counter potential Durant. So because it does outspeed Durant. So it's actually really handy. It could even have heat wave. It could have overheat. Um, we've seen certain items being used with it, such as eject pack, where it can actually um, pivot itself out by using overheat straight away. Really, really handy tech. It does have fake out pressure. Multiple different um, dimensions of this Pokemon that can actually be played out. Um, especially with this team composition too. Obama Snow, we don't actually see at all much, to be honest. So really handy having his weather choice, let's say, maybe to counter certain 
um, rain teams as well, so that's yeah. been really good. Also, we see that uh, Jellicent and Rubber Riperia combination, which we see a lot. We know that Jellicent can go for that trick room yeah. and n something with that Rubber Riperia, which is really, really bulky and also very known to carry weakness policy. So if you're not really able to take it out, you're going to be uh, getting back a lot of damage. Oh, definitely. And um, you can see the Riperia. It does have a trick room setup by its side in the form of Jellicent. Um, of also being, let's say, for example, immune to fake out pressure. So um, uh, Miguel will have to try to see how they can he can counter perhaps the different mode that Brandon goes for because Brandon does have the variety of choice of depending what mode he wants to go with regards to speed control and offensive pressure that he can exert because Durant is a powerhouse of a Pokemon, especially when Dynamax and Rhyperior. So it'll be really interesting to see what he decides to bring. Yeah, so if uh, Brandon decides to lead with a Durant, that definitely something might help him to take into account, making sure that he brings a lead to make sure that the Durant doesn't really get a uh, three uh, Dynamax turn where he can just go with those boosts that also attack. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we're going to see here immediately the leads on the Durant We have that jealous thing, but it is going to be paired with that Turk Tiffany, which makes a lot of people's tournament. Seeing that Mikhail also decides to go for that Toby Kiss, but this time leading it next to that Mano Leg. Yeah, so very interesting leads, I think, from Brandon's side. Um, he might potentially be trying to go for a Trick Room setup, because Toby Kiss can be used as a redirection uh, user uh, with its Follow Me. But at the same time, Brandon, uh, Brandon sorry, can easily choose to go on the offensive, maybe deal loads of damage, um, through the use of Dynamax form of Togekiss, get airstreams up and maybe switch Jellison out. Who knows? It could be a block, to be honest. Yeah, that's definitely uh, an option, but you know, definitely my call has to take into account the fact that Trick Room is going to be able to set up, so he either has to double uh, target the Jellison, but with that follow me, it might not really uh, do exactly what he wants to, and then if Brandon has that right there in the back and gets a good trick room, it's definitely something that he's going to worry about. Dynamax Yeah, so Miguel going for the turn one Dynamax straight off the bat. Um, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if Brandon opts for the same, which he actually doesn't. We do see a Max Airstream come out from Miguel's side into Brandon's Togekiss, taking it nearly down to uh, about half of its health whilst uh, raising both uh, Milotic and Togekiss's speed by one stage. And we actually see the Milotic <laughs> revealing that coil tech um, strategy that we have seen which increases uh, its defense by one and its accuracy as well so it, may, it, it extends its longevity onto the field and um, we do see a Togekiss coming out from a <laughs> Dazzling Gleam sorry coming out from the Togekiss dealing uh, residual damage and I do believe we saw a Shadow Ball into the Togekiss from Yes Jellison. exactly so Jellison here not opting to go kind of for the Trick Room mode uh, both players kind of really going on an offensive uh, kind of IDE because Togekiss went for that Dynamax on my, my, my Kel's side yeah. and that Koi immediately um, putting a lot of offensive pressure. Brandon now this time deciding to do go for that follow me, redirecting the attacks that are now going to be coming out from the Togekiss and my lot Ooh, Ooh, the Togekiss here hanging on with one HP, definitely really important in case Milotic wanted to kind of try and do some damage to that Jellicent. And we actually see a Hypnosis coming wow. out. So definitely together with that coil, uh, definitely something really, really scary. The Stoic is, is now going to be put to sleep, but it only actually has one turn, um, one HP left as we do see Trick Room coming out from Jellicent, which we were just talking about. Exactly. So many multiple things happening during that turn. Um, we do actually see Milotic, because it did use Coil, it had an increased chance of landing a very inaccurate Hypnosis. Um, he did, uh, from Miguel's side, actually land it into the Togekiss, rendering it incapacitated temporarily. Um, but we do see the Trick Room coming out from Jellicent, which is more important right now. Um, I do believe... Brandon will, he could potentially try to like get rid of his Toad Kiss so he could bring in his uh, Trick Room Sweeper, potentially in the form of Rhyperia. Even, I could even see a Bomber Snow to be honest as well. Yeah, so we are going to see Togekiss switch out and we are going to see that a Bomber Snow now switching in, threatening some really um, strong things like Blizzard, which is also going to have that opportunity to freeze 
the uh, Pokemon on Michael's Fails as Shadow Ball is gonna come out from Jellison as Milotic is <laughs> opting to go for another Coral so definitely wanting to make sure that it hits those Hypnosis that it really really wants to go for as a Max Airstream here coming out from the Togekiss on Michael's side wow doing a lot of damage there <laughs> to that Jellison yeah that's a critical hit <laughs> there <laughs> that's definitely doing a lot of damage um, uh, we can see the Milotic um, trying to extend its duration on the field, trying to prove uh, to Brandon, hey, listen, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wear down your team unless you decide to try to take me out. But whilst doing that, uh, going for that strategy, um, the Togekiss is able to apply so much offensive pressure. Um, if it does have, for example, we have seen Togekisses run a various amount of items. Um, uh, one of those uh, items notably being a scope lens paired with, if it does go with the choice of its ability of super luck, um, it can actually have an increase, extreme in extremely increased chance of landing critical hits way more often than not. Um, uh, so very, very interesting here. Um, yeah, one of the things I think um, Brandon really, really has to worry about is now that my Lolodic is at plus two speed, meaning that this um, he is now still in Trick Room, yeah. which means he now really has to start doing damage. But because once we actually get out of that Trick Room, mm -hmm. this Milotic is going to be such a big issue. As we see Incineroar here switching in and Strength Sap yeah. actually coming out from Jellicent will going to be lowering the attack stat there of that Incineroar while actually healing back some damage here. Actually, a lot of a damage. Lot of <laughs> yeah, a, lot of a lot of HP. A lot of HP is actually going to be almost back to full as Blizzard comes out. And my Lodic here revealing that it also has Recover. So that's definitely going to be a tough thing to take out here, seeing that Jellicent and Obama Snow both really can't hit it for any super effective damage. Yeah, definitely. So it's very, I mean, uh, Miguel's side makes a lot of uh, play, sorry, makes a lot of sense bringing the Incineroar He can try to exert fake out pressure whilst being able to threaten the Obama Snow with those fire stab uh, moves that can potentially uh, one hit KO the Bomb Snow whilst being able to uh, once again um, uh, recover my Lotic's HP by using uh, recover um, uh, just showing that my Lotic is gonna be that main threat that Brandon really needs to try to take care of yeah, so there's only two more turns of uh, Trick Room left, meaning that uh, now this Obama Snow is facing down that Incineroar, definitely feeling a little, little, little bit scared, but also Incineroar does have the option to go for Fake Out, meaning yep. that this can kind of stall out another turn of Trick Room quite easily. But he does have to worry about any Water-type attacks coming out from Jellison then this turn, doing a lot of damage to that in, in Incineroar. Incineroar not feeling too comfortable, not feeling comfortable there in that position. Mikhail just decide to bring back that Togekiss, wanting to kind of maybe negate any attacks there coming out from Jellison. This time, Brandon opting to use his Dynamax, which yep. he hadn't done before Mikhail did. So we're going to probably see that Obam Obama Snow, and we are going to see that. So now we are going to be able to see some really strong attacks coming out, and Obama Snow would have probably also been able to live a Flare Blitz yep. with those boosted HP if Mikhail decided to not switch out as a water spout is going to be coming out with from an almost full health jettison doing a lot of damage there to that Togekiss but Milotic taking that quite comfortable so Max Overgrowth coming out going into that Milotic is going to be doing a oh. lot of damage here and enough to pick up the knockout I believe no I it was i think it survived on 2 hp actually oh that's definitely <laughs> really really important wow, in that case it's it going to actually be revealing that it is a berry going to be healing back some hp with that citrus berry and now does have the opportunity to go for recover so living on a yep. 2 hp is really really important here for Mikhail because now it means there's only one more turn of trick room left but he does have to worry about another max overgrowth coming out there from that abomination room oh definitely i think that um uh, Miguel's play was quite advanced there. I think he definitely expected the Obama Snow to Dynamax um, to counter his fake out from his Incineroar into Obama Snow. And um, we know we don't know. Like I mean, uh, being able to swap out the Incineroar for a later uh, win condition from Miguel's side is very smart. Whilst being able to survive from the Water Spout coming from the Jettison. So I think all around. Brandon tried to go for a good play, but Miguel in this turn made a better play, predicting what Brandon wanted to try to go for. Yeah, so the bomb is not quite in a still uncomfortable position, but one turn left of that trick room, meaning that Mylodic is going to be able to go for those hypnosis on the next turn if Brandon isn't able to take it out. So Shadow Ball coming out 
from Jellison. Togek is living on one HP, so <laughs> Michael definitely trains his Pokemon very, very well because they seem to be l able to live a lot of attacks. So this time, my Lodic not able to hang on with that max overgrowth. So no very accurate hypnosis coming out next turn as the Dazzling Gleam is gonna come out from Togek is getting that <laughs> critical hit on that Obama Snow. And we actually see the burn coming out, being able to whittle down uh, or actually um, uh, uh, prevent the Jellicent from regaining any HP due to the grass terrain being on the field. Um, very inch I mean, I think Milotic did its job in a way because right now uh, Miguel's in a position where he's outside of Trick Room. He does have Incineroar being able to uh, come back in with uh, potentially his uh, last remaining Pokemon as well. Um, uh, I think right now, so far, Brandon's giving off good pressure. He's Togekiss is asleep, unfortunately, in the back as well at 1 HP. So we'll go down just to a hail. So maybe he's waiting for hail to um, pass uh, to uh, subside. Yeah, so Incineroar and Conkeldra are actually switching. And so Conkeldra is also kind of a, a slow Pokemon here. Yep. But definitely, I believe, uh, faster than the Abom Abomas Gnome. Um, can yep. also go for things like a uh, Mech Punch if he decides to run any priority moves. Maybe able to pick up that knockout immediately. Definitely. It's going to be really interesting to see how uh, Miguel's going to try to um, deal with Brandon's Jellicent at the minute. Is he going to potentially go for a dark type move from Incineroar into uh, Jellicent and maybe even uh, double into it through a use of a Thunder Punch Conkelda. Um, it'll be really interesting because Conkelda does usually like running that kind of move. But Brandon actually expecting, anticipating potentially that kind of double in play and switches his Jellicent out into Togekiss just so he could try to get rid of it and uh, prevent any damage onto his Jellicent. So Incineroar here revealing that it's actually Taunt, so making sure that the Jellicent can't go for any Trick Rooms again as that might Drain Punch is going to wow. be coming out, is enough to pick with the KO on yep. that Obama Snow here. So, meaning that he now, you know, has um, only really one very healthy Pokemon in the back. So, definitely kind of something uh, interesting that he now wants to bring. What did he have in the back? Is it something that really uh, likes to be in Trick Room? If it's that Rhyperior or, or if he brought something like Celezo that, you know, also really functions well outside of Trick Room? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think it's still either a player's game, to be honest, because it just all depends on, for example, what Brandon has in the back to bring, which actually is the Durant. So, very interesting choice there. I mean, he has unfortunately wasted his um, Dynamax from Brandon's side, uh, only because right now Durant, because of its hustle ability, it does give increased attack, but at the cost of having reduced accuracy. So it has a chance to miss, unfortunately, from Durant's side. It goes ahead and we actually see the miss coming out. Him trying, uh, Brandon trying to go for the stamp stomping tantrum onto the Incineroar. Unfortunately misses. The Incineroar does retaliate, goes for the Flare Blitz into the Durant, being able to pick up the one hit KO straight off the bat. I don't think critical hit mattered to be completely honest because Incineroar can be trained quite offensively physically. And um, uh, getting some recoil damage. We do actually see Drain Punch coming out from the Conkelda into the Togekiss, being able to pick off Togekiss after only one HP and still being asleep, unfortunately, for it. Yeah, so now Brandon down to his last Pokemon, only having that Jellicent in the bag, but kind of depending on uh, what exactly how he trained it, I think we believe we saw it had Water Spout and Shadow Ball yes. as uh, attacking moves, which really aren't uh, going to be able to really wear down this Conkelda, which is like almost full health, and that Incineroar, which also has a lot of HP left, but it also did have a Strength Sap, so it yes. could actually start lowering the attack of both Incineroar on Conkelda Kelder and then just try to heal back some damage there. Oh, exactly. I mean, right now, Jellicent's in the funny position where it can potentially bring this game back. It all depends on what Incineroar tries to go for because we did see the taunt reveal from Incineroar. We might be seeing it again in case um, it wants to try to shut down Brandon's strategy of going for Strength Sap to slowly whittle down uh, Miguel's uh, both Pokemon's uh, uh, phys physical attack stat um, and whilst regaining HP. So really interesting. Um, I think, I don't know, I mean, oh, wow. we're actually oh, going we to see a forfeit, forfeit wow. coming out. So Miguel here taking the win. Brennan kind of realizing there just really isn't much he can do anymore. He yep. really just wants to start going into game two. Maybe he, you know, took his time, now really has a game plan for game two, knows what he has to do and wants to now go for that. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, it's just like you said, uh, he just wanted to cut to the chase, go to game two, because he he was very well aware that um, Miguel had really good options against that 2v1. It would be extremely difficult for his position. Um, so it'll be really... Um, 
it, it'll be very interesting to um, actually see what Brandon's strategy is going to be in game two. Is he yeah. going to bring the Durant, perhaps? Yeah, maybe he wants to kind of switch off what he brought. So he did actually get off that trick room, yeah. but Michael was really kind of able to really stall it out, mm. where Brandon really couldn't really get a momentum going going into that trick room, even though he did get it off. So mm -hmm. he might not, not want to go for that trick room, or might be instead wants to kind of go f and bring something like that right right period yeah. and immediately go and try for trick room but something he really has to worry now about is that incineroar that does have taunts if Mikhail decides to lead for that he just really doesn't have as free of an option uh, to go for that trick room immediately oh definitely i mean uh, it's i, I think it, it's uh, brandon has multiple options right now to be honest um uh, he can potentially go for the Durant lead. He could even go for a fake out pressure from the Salazzle too, in case, um, in anticipation of any total case, he does actually exude um, uh, super effective damage uh, threat potential onto the total case as well. Um, he could also be boosting himself for his own target kiss. So for example, I've seen a lead uh, between Salazzle and uh, Toad kiss. The Salazzle can ma uh, Dynamax, for example, try to get the special attack up for the Toad kiss, and Toad kiss can have redirection or even go for the attack as well, being at plus one special attack. Yeah, but then again, he really has to worry about that uh, melodic. We did see it yes. uh, go for call, and once it gets up two of those calls, it's going to be probably hitting all of its uh, hi hypnosis, which can be very, very crippling because if you're going to be asleep for you know pretty much anywhere from two to like four turns yep. it's going to be really tough to get any damage off especially if he it is paired with a togekiss like we said we could go for max airstream mm -hmm. make it the fastest thing on the field so maybe brandon really wants to kind of look back at his trick room options and yep. see maybe I, I want to kind of go for that again but maybe play it a little bit differently maybe he has a real strategy to True. stop that my melodic and now in game two he's like i know how to immediately stop this melodic and we are going to see that togekiss this time paired with this duran le just like we were talking about yep. on brandon's side so like how immediately going again for that my melodic this time no togekiss but instead we see the mold breaker here coming out from excadrill yeah really interesting uh, lead i think uh, miguel knows that um he's trying to show uh, show how um uh, bulky mylotic can get because especially when you lead extra drill and mylotic you can see most of the times i've seen personally that um extra drill does go for dynamax does try to increase um both its uh, defense or special defense which actually affects mylotic as its partner and um because extra drill is a really good Pokemon to type in, is extraordinarily good. Uh, max weight increases the special defense by one, and max, uh, max uh, steel spike does increase the defense. So um, Miguel has options to try to bulk up his Pokemon, but actually we see the extra drill switch out straight into the Incineroar, try to get the Intimidate straight onto uh, Brandon's Durant, uh, taking him down at two minus one attack, and actually potentially having fake out pressure as well on the oncoming following turn. Yeah, so we are immediately going to see a Dynamax come out here. Lots of players here deciding to quite early on go for the Dynamax. I'm assuming this is going to be the Durant, which yes. we definitely see go for the Dynamax if it comes in that lead. So it'll be, um, I'm not sure which uh, slot Brandon's going to aim for, because if it does go for a Max Quake into the previously extra drill slot, oh wow, we actually see, no, we don't see anything <laughs> like that. We see Max Lightning Ooh. come straight out from Durant. The Milotic <laughs> surviving on 2 HP once again. This Milotic has been extraordinarily trained and is very loyal to Miguel from what it seems because it's able to re uh, recover its HP through the use of Citrus Berry. This is just um, deja vu, I believe, from game one. Yeah, exactly. So we definitely know Mikhail really went for a more def uh, defensive setup here with this Togekiss not being able to now uh, get that KO, but we are going to see that core coming out again. So maybe it wants to go for that hi Hypnosis again, just like we saw in game one. Oh, yes, but because I think Brandon really... Um, I don't think we were anticipating this, to be honest, because this is a very, very smart adaptation from Brandon. He's able to get the electric terrain up, um, uh, basically negating hypnosis on Durant. Um, he's Dynamax, so fake out from Incineral will not be able to flinch it. Um, my low tick is literally down to two, uh, 22 HP, so it's probably going to go down if it doesn't have protect right now from either attack coming from Brandon's side. So I think so far it's a really solid adaptation from Brandon. He's been able to really force Miguel's hand and uh, get him to struggle in this situation. 
Yeah, so we still kind of have to worry about the uh, hypnosis going on to that Togekiss since yeah. it is a flying type, not going to be protected by any of the electric terrain. So Togekiss leaving the field here, Jellicent replacing itself as the fake out does come out from Incineroar, not going to be affecting the Jellicent since it is a ghost type. So Max Quake here coming out from that Duran, going into the Incineroar, being able to pick up the knockout here. So especially this Duran in Dynamax form is a complete powerhouse it really really is uh, and incineral just goes straight down from that um i don't think durant really cares to be honest um and we do actually see the malotic go ahead and recover its hp once again trying to show uh, that it can try to put in the work on miguel's side being able to actually do what it wants because right now we don't see brandon targeting it down trying to uh, get rid of it to be honest yeah, but at this point, you know, uh, with this, my, with this el electric terrain, at least he really doesn't have to worry as much about that hypnosis coming out. Melodic very is true. not very known to be like a super hard, um, like special uh, hitter. So now yep. we are going to see Conkelder join the field here. Yes, so uh, Conkelder, um, I think, is still a solid player coming from uh, Miguel bringing it in now. Um, it could potentially even have a Thunder Punch from its end, and it will be boosted by the electric terrain if it does want to try to uh, deal super effective damage onto the Jellicent to try to get rid of it. Um, I'm not sure. I think Miguel has to really take into consideration if Durant will be able to pick off the uh, KO from Milotic's HP range. Uh, so in actual thought <laughs> of that, we see the Milotic switch out going straight into the extra drill on Miguel's side. Um, Negating any uh, electric attacks that are coming out exactly. since it is a ground type. So another Dynamax here coming out, meaning that since he just made a switch, this is going to be that Conkeldo. Definitely a Pokemon we really don't see Dynamax that often. No, yeah, definitely. I, th I think it's because it's it can be so uh, HP invested. Um, it's got really high HP stats. Um, right now it's facing down a Durant, which is really good in its uh, physical attack. So it's be a being able to take it out whilst potentially getting max fightings and boosting itself up. And uh, we actually see a Max Steel Spike coming up from the Durant into the Contelda. Contelda's actually swiping that off of its shoulders with its big boulders because it doesn't mind. Um, it will take the hit and potentially retaliate with a Max Lightning in electric terrain. Will it be able to pick up the KO? It Ooh. actually doesn't. Very, very close. Yeah, Jellison, a very, very bulky Pokemon, now has the ability to fight back with a Shadow Bow, doing a tiny bit of damage here. But Conkeldor now uh, going for the Dynamax, meaning that he still has like over half HP, otherwise he would have been very, very low. But it does mean that now Mikhail doesn't really have the uh, opportunity to go for a Dynamax with his Excadrill, which is something that we really, really see very often. But now the thing is, uh, Durant is going to be um, ending his Dynamax, meaning it's probably going to be a little bit easier for Miguel to take it out yes but so far he's kind of just really not been doing any damage to the Durant and just kind of let it get off its attacks yeah you're very right um I think so far it's been trying to say um well uh Miguel's been not focusing down the Durant he's been trying to focus down maybe the threats coming out from Jellison and uh Co and we actually see a stomping tantrum landing successfully onto the extra drill um also the Durant revealing its life orb uh, being able to deal damage, not take out the extra drill, and we actually <laughs> see a critical hit coming out onto the Jellicent from extra drill, being able to take it out. I don't think the critical hit mattered, but it still is nice to see. Yeah, so we actually also now see with an earthquake that it is going to be hitting on onto his own Conkelder, but now Conkelder is going to be finding back is enough to this time pick up the KO on that Duran, meaning that Brandon is now down to his last two Pokemon. We've seen a Togek as a gamble, we haven't actually seen his last Pokemon. So last time he brought that uh, a Bomber Snow, and I'm kind of interested. Maybe this time he tried to uh, switch it up. We're not going to find out yet. We are now first going to see that Togekiss switch back in, which we saw was quite important for him. Uh, in that game one, yep. this now still has an opportunity to redirect any moves coming out from Mi Miguel's side. So maybe a bomber snow kind of is an opportunity to try to go for some blizzards. Yes, definitely. I think right now um, uh, Miguel was able to get the plus one attack onto its extra drill as well, thanks to that max fighting. So if it does have rock slide, it he, I think Miguel would be really tempted to try to go for it. Um, uh, he's be because it is a widespread move, it, it is going to hit both Togekiss and Obama Snow, dealing super effective damage to both. And uh, if it is able to get enough damage or even go for an Iron Head, take out the Togekiss, Contelda might potentially be able to pick up this uh, game to Formigal in a set. 
but we actually see the Toad Kiss revealing the Babiri Berry um, uh, to negate half of the damage done from that Iron Head from Extra Drill. Even a plus one attack is not able to take it out. Extra Drill, because it does reveal the Life Orb, does go out to the Recoil, unfortunately. We see a Dazzling Gleam coming out from the Toad Kiss, not being able to quite pick up the KO onto the Conkelda, but still does a lot of damage. And we see the <laughs> Max Knuckle actually come out onto the Abomus Snow, taking it down to one HP. Is that a Focus Sash? That is a Focus Sash, confirmed. And um, wow, that is... This is um, quite, quite good for Brandon's side at the minute. He's trying to show that he is making a comeback. He does land the blizzard uh, from his Abomus Snow into the Conkelda, successfully being able to take it out, leaving Milotic as the last Pokemon standing on Miguel's side. Yeah, so definitely a tough position here for my girl to be in, even though that man Lodic, um, you know, they're quite defensively, but th he is now facing down that Abomasnow and Togekiss, so unless he really has any spread moves, that I'm I don't think we've actually saw come out from my Lodic, he is going to be really in a tough position, but he is going to, um, my Lodic is going to resist any ice types coming out from uh, the Abomasnow. Yes, because uh, I do think that usually Abomasnows do run uh, a bit less speed than the average Milotic. So it, the question will be, is Toad Kiss quick enough um, to outspeed Milotic um, and maybe get an air slash off flinch, which it, we actually do see come out from the Toad Kiss. It does land it, and it <laughs> does actually get the flinch. Wow, and okay. A, a Leaf Storm here coming out from that Obama Snow is wow. enough to pick up the KO. So definitely here bringing it back. So Brennan is starting to kind of really change up his game plan compared to game one. He kind of realized, okay, this time I really want uh, to use Durant. Trick Room really didn't work for me the way that I wanted to. My girl kind of had a lot of options to kind of stall it out and it really paid off because this Durant really got like three Dynamax moves off and just doing a lot of damage to Mikhail's team and it was really hard for him to kind of come back from like the pure pressure that Brandon uh, was putting on also offensively. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think the strategy of being able to try to lead such offensive pressure for Brandon on his end for game two it does, it did really pay off. Obviously, there are multiple different times during game two that it could have honestly have gone either way, um, especially that last turn there, that winning turn from Brandon was very, very <laughs> vital because if he didn't get that flinch, Milota could have either opted to recover or maybe get uh, hypnosis off or even try to attack. So very, very risky play from Brandon that actually did end up paying off for him. Yeah, so this might also kind of reveal what kind of um, ability does he have on that Togekiss because uh, we kind of have two options. It's either yes. Super Lark or it is um, Serene Grace, meaning that with the Serene Grace it would be boosting the chances that it gets to hit that flinch with that air Definitely. slashes. Yes, by double I believe. Um, uh, but um, it's actually, <laughs> I mean, it could either go, it could be either ability to be honest because I do believe we have seen crits come out at some point. Um, but it is actually Babiri Berry as well. So it can, it's more of a supporter rather than other sets that we have seen during the format, which go for the offensive um, uh, threat um, with the scope lens as well, or even weakness policy that we've seen quite a few times, to be honest. Yeah, so I, I'm kind of wondering if Bronan kind of wants to go for that Durand uh, again. It's also like kind of the difficult part about going into game three when you are 1-1. One, one. Like, is my uh, opponent going to adapt? Do I want to kind of go for the strategy that worked again, or am I really trying to switch up so that maybe you know Michael has now thought of an idea of like okay I know how to stop Durant I know how to now go into game three no yeah exactly so it's just I think it's about conserving and using uh, the Dynamax at the right time with the correct Pokemon in the situation so um I, I don't know. I think that Brandon will want to kind of opt to bring that Duran again. It did put in a lot of work, um, especially being able to set up that electric terrain to negate the hypnosis on any grounded Pokemon from Brandon's side. Um, maybe so it's going to be a tricky one. Yeah, maybe Mikhail now not going to be leading with that Milotic. Yes, maybe really maybe. Being, being scared <laughs> of that Duran. He did lead it in the previous two games. But we are going to find out exactly what these players opted to go for. So Brandon kind of sticking what worked so well for him in game two. He's going to go for the Togekiss and Durant combination. And this time Miguel is switching up, not leading that Milotic, but instead he's going to bring in that Excadil and Togekiss. Yes, yeah, so I mean, Excadil and Togekiss do have really good synergy. Um, uh, um, between each other as well and um, uh, being able to recognize that okay my low tech isn't going to be doing as much uh, uh, of a good job in this game three because of that reveal of 
um, uh, the Max Lightning coming from the Durant side. So X Drill right now has a couple of options with uh, Miguel's target gets paired alongside of it. It can try to redirect. It can try to Dynamax both Pokemon. Uh, like one of uh, he's got options for both Pokemon as well. So it'll be really interesting what kind of strategy he goes for. We have seen Life Orb being revealed on X Drill, so we do know it's not Focus Sash. It is more offensively orientated. So. We'll, and we'll actually see it um, <laughs> not be regarded at all and being swapped out straight for Incineroar, being able to uh, get that Intimidate straight onto the Durant, being able to reduce it by one uh, physical attack at a stage. And um, of course, on the Toad Kiss, but that more than likely doesn't matter because it's usually especially offensive. Yeah, and we're going to see again that Dynamax coming out. Um, I believe this is Brendan's character, and it's probably going to be that to run. Uh, actually, it's Mikhail here going for oh. that uh, Togekiss immediately. So probably here both players uh, opting to go for that Dynamax quite early on. So no follow me now is going to be coming out from that Togekiss, as we do see that Dynamax there also on Brendan's side. Yeah, so I mean, I, d um, I don't know. I don't think, I don't believe we've actually seen the item from Miguel's Togekiss. We have seen the Babiri Berry coming out from uh, Brandon's Toad Kiss, so, oh, actually, it's Toad Kiss Dynamaxing from Brandon's side too, so not even the Durant trying to opt for the f the very offensive threat that it can be when Dynamaxed. Yeah, so both players are actually going for that Toge Kiss. Also meaning that both players don't have the option to go for any redirect. And now this Durant maybe has to worry a little about, about missing some moves. So the Max Airstream is going to be coming out from Toge Kiss on Mikhail's side. First is now going to be raising the speed stat of the Toge Kiss and that Incineroar. Well, actually, Brandon does the exact same thing. <laughs> also targeting down Mikhail's uh, Toge Kiss with that Max Airstream. So kind of board position wise, really nothing changing compared yes. to kind of the beginning of this turn both players opting to be like okay I really wanted speed control mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing so you know instead of kind of for going for that to run which we we usually see Dynamax yes. next to that Togekiss I kind of want to give up my option to go for follow me but make sure that I have the speed control yeah it's definitely what you said uh, Romy I do believe it's uh, for the sake of board position because it's kind of a stalemate at this point and we do actually see the iron head coming out onto the Togekiss there is no Babiri Berry on uh, Miguel's Toad Kiss, not, uh, so it could potentially be another item, it will be, and it will actually be able to take out the one, the Durant with a one hit KO, coming from the Max Airstream, and actually it being a crit, showing it could potentially be a very lucky Toad Kiss as well, and um, <laughs> actually being able to take out that threat whilst uh, getting the speed uh, boost, and we actually see a parting shot coming up from Incineroar, uh, being able to get reduce the special attack uh, of uh, Brandon's Toad Kiss because we do know it doesn't rely on critical um, hit kind of strategies because it has revealed a Babiri Berry instead of a Scope Lens. Um, yeah. So well, Michael, I think actually losing that Durant immediately, which you tends to kind of use it as a lot of offensive, uh, offensive profit, yes. offensive pressure is, is a little bit tough here. But we do see Excoril switching back in as Brandon's oh. Togekiss goes for a Max Airstream. Not enough to pick up the knockout here on the Togekiss on Mikhail's side, but it is going to be raising its speed. But this Excoril is now since it just switch in, um, it's only at plus one, but will possibly um, do a lot of damage to that Togekiss again, even if it goes, you know, just for an Iron Head, we did see the Barberry Barry, yes. but it's still, you know, you want to really start withering down something like a Togekiss, because it can really start, uh, you know, losing that speed control quite quickly. No, yeah, uh, I do believe because of the parting shot coming second after the Togekiss, um, in s uh, the mm. extra drill doesn't have plus one speed, but it does now, to be honest. <laughs> um, and we actually <laughs> see the Togekiss go ahead and max Airstream critical hit into Brandon's um, <laughs> Jellicent dealing huge amounts of damage being able to increase both of his po uh, Miguel's uh, speed stats as well um, uh and uh, the earthquake. And the earthquake. Here. I thought it was earthquake. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. So not actually hitting his own partner here, but it is going to now also go down to that life orb. So Togekiss on Brandon here. Now gonna go for that max uh, starfall enough to pick up the knockout here um, on that uh, Togekiss. So the knockout here on the Togekiss here on Michaelis side. So meaning that he doesn't really have that uh, speed control op op opportunity anymore. But we are, I believe, now going to be at the end of the Dynamax turns. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we've been all Dynamaxed out. Um, uh, uh, other than Brandon's Toad Kiss, still going strong, to be honest. Um, uh, I do think that right now, yeah, I was going to say the Incineroar is likely to come in from Miguel's side, being able to get an Intimidate off 
on potentially any physical move a bomber snow might have because sometimes they can be run as mixed attackers but so far we've only been seeing a leaf storm and a blizzard come from his side but he does more importantly have fake out pressure and a very advantageous uh type uh uh advantage over um a bottom of snow being able to take it down to its focus sash that it had previously revealed in yeah last so game. probably incineroar then wanted to kind of up go for that fake out break the sash on yep. that up bomb of snow maybe kind of um following it up with something like an iron head coming out from escarail but now Chogek is not being in a dynamax form if it carries something like follow me or yon that's definitely an option it can now go for to uh, protect that a bomb of snow from kind of these really super effective moves coming out oh definitely and i think extra is in a really good position right now because it could either go for iron head or rock slide maybe not iron head in case Togekiss does follow me and it does have the Babiri Berry. But we do actually see a fake out coming from Miguel's uh, Incineroar. A Iron Head does come out from Miguel's uh, Extra Drill trying to whittle down the Togekiss and get rid of its berry as well, to be honest. Um, and once again, showing that it is Life Orb giving that additional damage. And we actually see a Blizzard coming out from Brandon's um, uh, Bomber Snow dealing a lot of damage there to that extra grill, you yes. know, Incineroar, of course, being a fire type, takes that quite comfortably, so um, Brand, uh, Mikhail just kind of realizing, okay, Chogekiss is currently my biggest threat, that's the one that I really want to start focusing down, and, you know, Obama's Snow is something that, you know, I can very easily still deal with with this in, in Incineroar, as long as it, you know, stays healthy, so I think the best option here, kind of, for Mikhail to go for is really focus down that, that Chogekiss, making sure that that's off the field, and then have Incineroar kind of have the option to just go for really big Blitz. Oh, definitely. Uh, because I think right now Miguel's looking to be in a really good position. We do actually see the Iron Head mm -hmm. being able to um, uh, knock out that um, Togekiss on Brandon's side. I don't think the critical mm -hmm. hit mattered there, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but maybe that was the strategy all along. Um, uh, we don't see the extra door draw down because of its life orb recoil. And we do see the Flare Blitz coming out from the Incineral side, being able to take down Brandon's uh, Bomber Snow to its focus sash, leaving it at 1 HP. And a Blizzard coming out from Brandon's Bomber Snow, yeah. being able to actually take out the extra drill, deal a bit more of chip damage onto the Incineral. But I do think right now it's a very... I think pretty much the game has uh, gone <laughs> into Miguel's favor because one HP of Bomber Snow facing down an Incineral and potentially a fourth fresh Contel the Pokemon <laughs> especially. Yeah, yeah, also like with this um, Obama Snow now, you know, wi being with this 1HP, but also this Misty Terrain still on the field, meaning yes. that there's no freeze possibilities coming out from Obama Snow. So in center over here, going for a Flare Blitz is with a 1HP, definitely enough to pick up the knockout here. So Miguel here winning quite comfortably with that um, um, team that he kind of brought here with yes. now he, he definitely switched it up he didn't bring uh, melodic at all so as far no. as, we, as we've seen so he really kind of realized melodic really didn't do as much as i wanted to yeah. i really have to kind of make sure that if brandon goes for that durant lead again i really have something strong because he kind of now forced uh brandon to not use the dynamax yes. on his uh, durant but instead he had to switch to that um Togekiss, so definitely Durant now not being able to really uh, do that much damage as he really wanted to. Yeah, I think uh, Miguel was able to adapt to Brandon's adaptation uh, from game two, bringing it into game three, not bringing the Milotic, just like you mentioned, and actually being able to kind of whittle down uh, the board position at the point where he is able to face the Abominus Zona, for example, which is not going to do much at all against Incineroar, unfortunately. I think it was very vital being able to preserve his Incineroar um, because he's able to have so many options with it. Fake out, it's typing, to be honest, is really good and solid against um, uh, Brandon's side. And um, actually being able to have the Intimidate as well in case, for example, a Duran, as we saw turn one of game three, he is able to reduce its attack by one. So really solid showing to be honest yeah so we are going to be um going into the interview in a couple of minutes with yes. orwin and michael yep
So we are live back with our winner of round two, Miguel Marti. Miguel, tell me, how do you feel after that? Uh, it feels pretty tricky because yeah. uh, I'm running Target Creed mm -hmm. and it's like, it's so good, yeah. but it don't feel uh, well to play it. Yes. Anyway, I think um, we have been playing three matches, mm -hmm. um, three intense matches. Matches. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, um, I think... Yeah, we have been so, um, I don't know, I, I think we, we could both uh, win you this, both this won, round. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite close at times yep. as well, so yeah, yeah. it was really, it must have been really tough being able to call which Pokemon that you wanted to bring, depending on which game. So yeah. how did you feel when you saw that Max Lightning um, reveal yeah. from Duran? <laughs> that was pretty crazy, Yeah, wasn't it? I, I was like, oh my god, I'm <laughs> the second one yeah. was like, okay, I lost. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... I don't know how, but I could um, manage to just finish with Milotic. Yes. But he was running the other Togekiss, which uh, uh, it, if 
don't hacks with um, crits. With crits, yeah. Hacks with flinches. Yes. So, oh, that's um, so true. Yeah, because it could have even have been Serene Grace, uh, couldn't it? Yeah. Because it was able to actually get that really last, uh, very important um, flinch from the air <laughs> slash as well. So I think that did pretty much get uh, Brandon into game three after yep. that too. So, I mean, how do you Finally. feel about not bringing my low take? Do you th I mean, it definitely did well for you there, yeah. to be honest. But um, what was your thought process about that? Uh, when I saw um, um, Durand was carrying Thunderfang, I yes. was like, okay, Malotic is not going to be able to be there because I have hyp hypnosis. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I said, well, hypnosis. You said okay. it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about hypnosis it. Hypnosis in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, hypnosis. I know exactly what you mean. And, um, I couldn't do nothing with yes. Milotic, so yeah. I was like, okay, it's going to be a pretty um, tough turn one. Yeah. Because he has to decide if he goes um, with uh, Max Quake um, on Excadrill. Yes. Or goes into um, Iron Head, well, Max, Max um, Steel Spike, Steel yes. Spike into Togekiss. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, I think it's going to be better for me. Very true, it because you did say that you did have the Crit Kiss uh, yeah. doubly <laughs> named, because it does actually carry the scope lens and have the super luck ability as well, yep. boosting it to have um, basically a very high chance to crit, but um, there were a couple of turns I do believe we didn't see a crit out. Must have been disappointing. <laughs> 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 I do believe. <laughs> it was for yeah. me, because I, I sensed it was a Crit Kiss as well. I think the, the crit that mattered um, yeah. was the crit on Jellicent. Oh yes, because I'm not sure if it was KO with uh, without a grid and mm -hmm. the earthquake. Yes, and um, but the, um, for example, the grid on Durant was KO anyway. Yes, so it wasn't. Um, that wasn't too much of a problem yeah. because it wasn't even Dynamax, was it in game three? Yeah, so you were able to completely wipe it off the field. Um, so I mean, it was really solid play. I do agree with you. I think it could have gone either way, but you did really adapt well in not bringing the Milotic because you did say, well, listen, my whole Milotic strategy is going to be really <laughs> tough. <laughs> After that, Duran <laughs> carrying Thunderfang just kind of it like is, it put is. a stop to it. But um, do you have any shout outs, for example, to anyone so far? You are 2 0. Really solid, really positive uh, start so far going into round three. Yeah, of course. Um, I would like to thank um, my team, Giants, yes. who are supporting me. We solid. are Giants. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Representing. <laughs> and of course, uh, all my friends who helped me. Uh, building the team and yep. preparing the tournament. That's so awesome. I mean, shout outs to you yep. guys. Shout we have a giant. <laughs> uh, I'm a giant too. Fair play. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so that'll be us. Um, uh, we are going to be moving on to round three very shortly as well. I do believe pairings might actually be up. So we're just going to rush it through. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Miguel. It was Thank lovely you to have you on stream. <laughs> and I wish you all the best in the following rounds. Thank as you well. very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, everyone. See you in a bit. See you guys.